Hey folks, welcome to another TK panel quick tip. Tony Kuiper recently released some updates to the TK7 panel, so for the next few quick tips, I'm gonna be showing you how the new stuff works. And if you're a TK7 customer, then you should have received an email with a link to download the free update. If not, make sure to check your junk email folders in case it got filtered. In this quick tip, I'm gonna show you the biggest and coolest of the updates a brand new way to make masks called Infinity Color Masks. As you know, the source section of the Rapid Mask module gives us a variety of sources from which to make masks, such as luminosity masks, channel masks, color range masks, and saturation and vibrance masks. Each mask source gives you a different starting place from which to make masks, and this makes it possible to target very refined adjustments to just about any part of an image. The color range source already contains 12 different preset color range options. It also previously had a choose option which accessed the standard Photoshop color range selection tool. These older methods of making color range masks are okay, but the accuracy and feathering could leave a little to be desired. But with the update, make special note of this choose option. It now houses Tony's newly developed Infinity Color Mask Selection Tool, which is far superior to any other method of creating color range masks that I know of. And as powerful as traditional luminosity masks are, these new Infinity Color Range Masks are just as useful and in some situations, even better. If you haven't already seen Tony's video on the new Color Range Mask Tool, I'll link to it in the description so you can check that out as well. Now let's look at some examples of how these new masks work. I'll be demonstrating on some of the practice images that are included in volume two of my favorite Photoshop techniques course. So if you have that one, you can follow along with me. For this image, I wanna brighten the backlit sunflower petals so they're closer to being as vibrant and illuminated as they really were when I was there. So in the updated TK7 panel, in the rapid mask module, we'll come to the color source and select the choose option. And this opens the color picker tool and using that we'll select one of those yellow colors there in the sunflowers and then click OK. And now we enter the new Infinity Color Mask tool. And we're already getting a great selection of the colors in those sunflowers and uh, it is feathering out into other parts of the image. So what I can do is if I want to uh, refine that selection, the color that I selected, I can drag out the slider on the color continuum here. So if I want to really target it just to those yellows and oranges, I can narrow it down or I can expand it out into other colors. In this case, I'm gonna narrow it down to try to really just target the colors in the petals as much as possible. If I had any areas of really saturated colors that were getting blown out in the mask, I could use the brightness slider to bring back some of those areas. But in this case, I like the selection that it's making, so I'll leave it at its default full brightness setting. And if you want this mask to feather more into adjacent colors or less, you can use the feathering slider for that but in this case, I think somewhere near the default middle setting is the right one. And since this is the first time I'm showing you this tool, I'll go through these other buttons at the top as well. The IM button allows you to toggle back and forth between the image and the mask. Image view, mask view. You can use the eyedropper button if you want to select a new color, but in this case I don't. I like the color I selected, so I'll leave it where it was. The X button allows you to cancel out of the infinity color range tool if you decide you don't want to use this mask. And the OK button will now take the preview. So, so far we're just looking at the preview of the mask. It's not a mask yet, but when we click OK, it now converts that preview into an actual mask down here in the channels panel. You can see the rapid mask and loom lock channels. So now this infinity color range mask can be used as the source for all the rest of the functions in the rapid mask module. So for example, if I try different lights mass, it will narrow or target those colors that I selected more narrowly. And if we use the darks mass, we get the inverse of the color range mask. And I can also use the modify section to modify the mask. 
And finally, you can output the color range mask just like you can any other mask that you make with the rapid mask module. In this case, I'm gonna use the layer menu to apply this to a hue saturation adjustment layer. So here's my hue saturation adjustment layer and it came with that mask attached. And now I can use the adjustments in the hue saturation adjustment layer to increase the saturation and the brightness and even the hue of those sunflowers and get them dialed in just as I want them to look. And as you can see, the mask constrains those adjustments to just where I want them without any visible edges or adjustment artifacts. So that's a quick overview of how the Infinity Color Mask tool works. I think it's so good, I wanna take you through several examples of ways it might be used. So let's move on. In this image, I want to lighten up the trees that are down here, these aspen trees, which are kind of that yellow green color. So let's see if we can find a mask that will work for that. So I come back to choose, I choose one of these colors in these aspen trees, click OK, and I can see that it's done a good job of starting that selection. And let's see if I want to expand the selection at all, bring in some more of the greens maybe, and a little bit more of the yellows. And of course that brought in more of the mountain, but it really did hit some more of these yellows down there. I'm not sure if that's necessary. Uh, it's not overly bright, so I don't need to worry about that, and I don't think I need to worry about feathering. So I'm gonna say okay at this point. And now back in the rapid mass module, the first thing I wanna do is make some modifications to this. I want to open up the light areas in the mask even more, so I can do that with these modify sliders and open up those areas even more so that they'll get even more adjustment. Now I want this adjustment just to go the aspen trees, not up here in the sky and the rocks. So I'm also gonna use the black brush to paint out this whole upper part of my mask that I don't wanna be included in this adjustment. So something like that. And now I'll add this to a levels adjustment layer. And with levels, I can bring up the highlight slider and work with the mid-tone slider a bit. And I can also come into the color channels and work with the reds. And let's see, do I wanna shift the greens? I don't wanna shift the greens more green. Uh, not sure that I need to do too much with the greens there. Let's come down to the blue yellow axis and let's see if I do I want to add any more yellows in, maybe slightly more yellow somewhere in there. I don't know if that's perfect, but you can see how great a job it's doing of targeting that adjustment just to those aspen trees and none of the rest of the image. In this one, I want to adjust the hue of the autumn leaves here. So color, choose, select one of these yellow colors here in the leaves, click OK, and already I think that's done just about a perfect job of finding the leaves that I want, so I'll click OK. And I don't think I even need to modify this mask, I think I can just add it to, in this case, a curves adjustment layer. And in the curves, I'm gonna come into the red channel and shift those colors a little more towards red. And in the green, maybe shift them a little more towards magenta. And in the blue channel, let's see. No, I don't really need to go more yellow, so I may leave the blue channel pretty much where it is. And there's that hue shift in those autumn leaves. And again, it's really seamless, perfectly feathered, perfectly matched to the colors. And if we zoom in to 100%, you can see that there's just no visible edges to those. The mask just really matches the image perfectly. 
I'm just feeling like maybe it's a little oversaturated, however. So now I have it set to not auto clear my channels panel currently. And if we go into the rapid mask menu, just to remind folks, if you check the keep channels panel clean, every time you use a mask, they'll be deleted from the channels panel. But if you have that unchecked, then those masks will stay there until you delete them or select a new source from the source section. So since I still have that same mask there, I wanna use that same color range mask that I made for the leaves, but I wanna apply it to a hue saturation adjustment layer this time. And with that, I can now bring down the saturation a little bit, because like I said, I felt like it was a little too saturated. And let's see how that looks. So that's a really effective hue shift to those, those leaf colors. In this image, I want to bring up the colors that are in my sunset. So let's see if we can work with that. Go ahead and choose a color from up there in the sky. And there's my mask. And let's see, just make sure it's reaching out as far as I want it to into the oranges and yellows. I think that's pretty good. Might feather it a little bit more, but I think that's about as good as that's gonna get, so I'll click OK. And this one, I might wanna do some modifications with. I think one of the things I'm gonna do is kinda of open it up quite a bit. Um, just kinda of brighten areas of the mask. I'm also gonna blur this, cause I do want this adjustment that I'm gonna make with the color to go beyond just those areas in the sky. I want it to feather out or blur out into other parts of the sky as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and blur this mask. And let's see, I don't know how much blur I wanna give it, but maybe somewhere in there. And click OK. And finally, I wanna take the black brush at a lower opacity, maybe just 30%, and I don't want this adjustment to be as strong down here in the foreground, so I'll just brush a little bit of it out down there. Okay, so now that I've got that mask set, I'm gonna actually use this with the add color action in the TKA menu. So I'll go ahead and run that action now, and this asks me to select a color, and again, it's gonna be probably one of these colors here in the, uh, the sunset, might be a little bit redder than that. But again, with this action, I can come back and fine tune that color at any point, so I don't have to get it exact right now. So I'll say okay. Now I still have that mask I made here. I want to apply that mask to this adjustment. So I can just use the apply button and it'll apply it to that mask. So there it is, and it's bringing in some of the color but I think the mask needs to be a little bit more far reaching. I need to open it up a little bit. So I'll enter layer mask mode and use the expand button to just expand that mask more and bring out more of the adjustment by making parts of the mask lighter than they were before. So let's take a look at how that's looking. Yeah, I like the adjustment overall. Not sure I like the color, but now I can double click the adjustment layer and work with finding what I think is the right color for that sunset that I want. Maybe something more in there. Okay, I like it. In this image, I wanna do two things. I wanna take out some of the blue color in the water down in the shadows down here. It's a little too blue saturated. And I also wanna increase the contrast and texture a little bit. So let's start with a color mask. And I'm gonna go ahead and select this blue that's down in here and click OK. And that does a great job of selecting that mask. I think actually that's perfect. So I'm gonna stay with that but now here in the rapid mask module, I will mask out the upper area because I really don't want to affect the sky with that, just the areas down here in the water. And the first type of adjustment that I'm going to make is a hue saturation adjustment so that I can just bring down that saturation down there in the water. So that's doing a great job of taking some of that blue saturation out of the water. And now I wanna add some contrast to that. So I still have that same rapid mask here. 
So I can now add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer and use that to bring in some contrast and work with the brightness a little bit to get everything down there in the shadows looking just how I want it. And let's see, those two adjustments together did a really nice job and the mask is doing a great job of keeping it out of the bright areas and all of the areas that aren't included in the mask. It is making some adjustments to the water out here that I don't like. So that's where I could select both of these layers and put them in a group. And then with a black brush, I can just mask it out of areas where I don't want that adjustment to have any effect at all. One last example. In this image, I wanna do two different things. I want to darken some of the blue tones and blue colors that are in the image. They're a little lighter and kind of a little uh, showier than I want them to be. And I want to lighten and increase contrast in the oranges that are in these large trees. So I wanna create more attention or draw to those large trees, which were really glowing in this twilight. And I wanna de-emphasize some of the lighter blue areas. So let's see, I think I'll start with the large trees. So I'm gonna select one of the oranges from the trees down here. And that starts me off with a really nice mass. Let's see if I wanna expand that out at all. A little bit, but I think that's pretty much hitting everything I want. So I'll say okay. And yeah, I feel like it's pretty good. I might try an auto correction just to pump up those orange areas in the large trees even more. And then I'll add this to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm gonna bring up the lightness and the saturation. Don't wanna to go too far with that. Somewhere in there and maybe work with the hues to get those feeling right. And let's see. Yeah, that's doing an okay job, but I'm not sure it's quite the look I was going for. So I'm actually gonna delete that layer. I still have the rapid mass. Let's try it instead with the curves adjustment layer. And with the curves, let me try lightening them. And also maybe bringing up some reds and some yellows into those. And go back to the composite channel and work with the overall contrast and just see if I can get the right look. Maybe somewhere in there. Yeah, I think that's looking more how I remember it. Okay, now on to the blues. So back to the choose infinity color. And let's go for some of the blues up here in the sky. And that mask looks really good. Let's go with that. And for this one, I will just add it to a curves adjustment layer. And just drag down the curve to darken those blues a bit. And maybe work in some contrast into the blues. I'm not sure where the right level is. Let's just see what we can work with here. Okay, let's see. Yeah, maybe something more like that. So, you can see how that really transforms that image. So you can tell I'm pretty excited about these new Infinity Color Masks. Stay tuned for future TK Quick Tips in which I'll cover some of the other new features in the TK7 update as well. All right, thanks for tuning in as always, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.